welcome to our final day of our PA virtual winter camp. I am so glad that you've had a chance to stick around with us during your winter vacation. And I hope you've been having fun, you've been staying safe, and you've been staying warm. And I hope you enjoyed some of our other videos too. But all good things must come to an end. This is our last video before we hit 2022. Can you believe it? And because of that, we want to try to get you back into the groove of really learning some new things and working that brain a little bit more. And so we got Miss Amy Page here who's going to talk to us about something that anybody who has taken anything in American history should know about, the U.S. Constitution. So Miss Amy Page, hello. Hi, Sheik. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to do. Yes. So I love all things U.S. history, and we are going to learn about the Constitution, kind of a really important document, right? And we are going to take a regular piece of paper and make it look old and ancient and aged. So just a reminder, the email that I sent to your parents or mom, dad, grandparent, aunt, uncle, you're watching this, sent it to you has a list of all the things that you'll need for this activity. If you don't have it yet, beautiful thing about video, you can just pause it, go get it and come right back. So just wanted to give that a little bit of reminder and I will turn it over to Miss Amy Page as we start this fun activity. Go right ahead. Awesome, thanks Sheik. Yeah, so just to touch base, you want a piece of paper. It can already have stuff on it. I have a cookie recipe on mine, a cup of cooled, make sure it is cooled down coffee or tea, um, a cookie sheet and a little hand towel. <clears throat> okay. So the constitution, it seems like a, like a buzzword, right? We constantly hear about the constitution. It seems like every time we turn on the TV, we hear something about the constitution or we listen to the radio, the news, anything like that. They're always talking about the constitution. So it's really important, right? And it is, but why is it important? What does the constitution do? What weight does it hold? And, and why do we hear about it all the time? So if I were to give you one sentence that describes the constitution, in a digestible way, I would tell you that it is the highest law of the land. Did you know that? Did you know the constitution was basically just a bunch of laws, right? Yes, I have my own copy of the constitution. That's no surprise if you know me. So the highest law of the land, but what happened? Whose idea was it to have a constitution? So we're going to jump into the lesson and then periodically throughout it, we'll start the different steps to making our old aged document. So way back July 4th, 1776, ring a bell, we declared ourselves free from England, right? We have this guy and he was like ruling over us. His name was King George III. He was not very polite. He did not treat us very well. And we didn't want any parts of that. We tried to discuss it. We tried to be level-headed and it didn't work. So we went to war. We fought the war. We freed ourselves, right? Now we're an independent country. Everything was great, right? Not so much because as time went on, we started to realize hey, you know what we need? We need rules and we need a governing body. And the more we sat and thought on that, we, not including myself, I was not around for this, but our founding fathers were. So they realized we need rules, right? Why do we need rules? Rules keep us safe. And why do we need a governing body? Because that's how those rules are enforced, right? So think about a rule in your home. In my house, we're not allowed to eat ice cream for breakfast, right? Just, you know, most days we can't have that. Why? It's not a healthy breakfast item, right? And who's the governing body? Me. So I make sure that that rule is enforced. So we take that and we apply it to a country. And that's why we decided we needed a constitution, some rules, a governing body, a group of people to oversee those rules to help our new country work to help our new country move forward and, and just start to develop life as a free country. So 
we kind of ran with this idea and we put together a committee and the committee's sole purpose was to write this constitution, right? And it had a lot of famous people on it. People you might have heard of, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, right? Some, some pretty well-known people. And they started to write out ideas and things that they thought would work really well for a country and, and how they could make this country, you know, sort of work and, and operate and function. Because again, everything that they knew was being under control by by England, right? And because we were no longer there, we needed our own set of, of everything, even down to currency. We needed our own currency. So here's a really fun fact that not a lot of people know. And I would even ask around at home, ask if your learning coach knows this. The constitution that we know, this is not the original constitution that we had. Our original constitution had an entirely different name. And if you don't know that name, I'm gonna tell it to you. But before we get there, we're gonna do step one of our aged document. So on a piece of paper, you should have this already. It was in your list of things to have. I have a, um, a cookie recipe actually uh, typed up, printed out, and this is what I'm going to use. So step one, have it printed out. Make sure all of your stuff is dry. Try not to use like Crayola markers and stuff like that. Those will bleed and run all over, but you can use crayons. You can use pens. You can print something out from your, um, your printer. And we're just going to crumple it up. We're gonna crumple it up once. We don't wanna crumple it up a bunch of different times because what happens is your paper starts, those fibers in your paper start to break down and your piece of paper will start to feel like a tissue. And that's not what we want, right? So we'll, we'll crumple it once, push it down as hard as you can, get those creases in there, and then very, very carefully open it back up. <clears throat> Make sure when you're opening it up that you're not tearing it or ripping it or poking a bunch of holes in it, okay? So our piece of paper has wrinkles all over it. You could get a little creative, start to rip off some edges, make it look, you know, really, really, really old and ancient. Have fun with it, right? It doesn't have to look perfect. We actually don't want it to look perfect, right? We want it to look old and a fun word, decrepit, right? Kind of worn out. So that's what my paper looks like, okay? It's got some rips and some tears and some wrinkles in it. I'm going to lay it flat on my cookie sheet. I have a small cookie sheet. If all you have is a big cookie sheet, that's okay. Even something like a shallow pie plate would work. Um, but once you have your paper down in your cookie sheet, carefully take your cold coffee or your cold tea water, you could even do both and gently pour it down over top of your paper. And you don't want to flood your paper. You just want it sitting over top of it. Okay. And then we're going to let that sit for maybe 10 minutes and our paper starts to absorb all of the color from our, our water and our, and our tea. Okay. But back to this failed document, right? Yes, the original copy of the Constitution was a failed document, and it was called the Articles of Confederation. Not a lot of people know that. A lot of people have heard of the Articles of Confederation, but they didn't really know what it was and what it had to do with, with anything. So sounded really good. Yes, we've got this, this articles, these articles of confederation. We've got them out November of 1777, the second continental Congress, right? That was kind of like our first government. It was a really big deal. They approved the first draft. It was known as the articles of confederation. A couple years later, 1781, all 13 states adopted the articles, which means all 13 states said, works for us. We like it. It sounds good. Let's live by it. Not good, right? They had a lot of problems. Now, in our defense, it was our first sort of go at getting any kind of rules and things like that out, right? And that was sort of the problem. Everybody just shot out their best ideas 
and there really wasn't any thought on the back end. So some problems that they had. Under the Articles of Confederation, the government had power, right? They could govern foreign affairs, which means they could trade back and forth. We could go to war, which was kind of important. And we could regulate currency. So we could make money and we could spend money. That's really easy, right? Who has like no problem spending money? Both of my hands are up. It's very easy to spend money. The problem was that the Congress of the Confederation had no way to enforce the request for money. What does that mean? How does the government get money from everybody who lives inside the country? A big old word we like to call taxes, right? Everybody has to pay taxes. We pay property tax and sales tax and taxes out of our paychecks and all sorts of things, right? Everybody pays taxes and that money goes to the government. And it's important, right? We fund schools. PA Virtual is funded in part by taxes, right? So those are important chunks of money. And the problem with the Articles of Confederation was the government had no way to enforce people to pay taxes. They could ask, they could say, hey, Amy, every Friday, pay us $5 sounds really good. But if Amy didn't want to, Amy did not have to. And that was the problem. What started happening was the members of the army, they were not getting paid and they're kind of doing important things like, you know, fighting a war and stuff like that. Right. So they started to desert. And when I mean dessert, I, I don't mean like they sat there and ate ice cream. I mean, they were leaving, right. They were, they were abandoning their posts because they weren't getting paid. And I can't say I blame them, right? So we were, it was just not working out, right? We had all these problems. We couldn't pay back our debts. We had to start currency. Can't start currency without anything kind of in the bank, right? So it was a problem. So we said, all right, no, we've got to start over. We've got to try this again. And so we decided to do that. And we called in a local expert, someone who we thought, okay, this guy knows a lot about the law. He's really smart. He knows how to manage and balance books. So he knows a lot about money. He's a smart guy. He went to college. We called our friend Alexander Hamilton and we said, Hey, look, Hamilton, we need a little bit of help. And he said, Hey, not a problem. I can help you rewrite your constitution. He was able to see all of those little pitfalls in the constitution. You okay? I just want to know the guy from the musical. Yes. So the guy from the musical is the one that came up with all the taxes and stuff. No, 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 no. So <laughs> no, we, the, the original, the um, articles of confederation, they couldn't force us to. So Alexander Hamilton saw a way to kind of write the law so that there wasn't um, there was no guessing game in it. He was able to, to make the constitution um, more abiding, more concrete and stuff like that. Which I is, just know many, yes. many people are going to have that question. The guy, from yep. the, the guy that was singing on stage. I mean, obviously yes. he didn't sing about them. But. Right. No, but he played a really important role in this. And I, and what I love so much about how popular Hamilton got is it, it really brought to light um, all of the important pieces and the important roles that he played um, because we ended up having a constitutional convention right here in Philadelphia. Go Eagles. And Alexander Hamilton came and he helped us look at the Articles of Confederation. And actually we said, hey, let's just tweak the Articles of Confederation. And Alexander Hamilton said, no, we're going to rewrite the entire thing. So they, he had this idea and it wasn't just him. He did not work alone. He kind of helped us oversee a lot of this because he brought just different bits and pieces of knowledge to the table and it was valuable stuff. So they knew they needed a better setup. They knew he was going to be helpful. We had this constitutional convention. It began in May of 1787 right in Philadelphia, and they started writing all of this new stuff out. And it was really, really, really exciting because we had fresh perspective, right? We knew it didn't work and we knew how we had to fix it and we got it done. So September of 1787, 
September is when we celebrate Constitution Day. I celebrate Constitution Day. Maybe you don't know that that is when it is. It is in September. It's Constitution Day. It is super fun. But we celebrate it then because that's when the Constitution was approved. Now, here's something interesting. Most of the delegates that were at the Constitutional Convention disagreed with parts of the Constitution. And if you look at the bottom of the Constitution, there's so many signatures, 39 signatures to be exact. Not, not surprising that some of those 39 people disagreed, but they decided, hey, listen, we need to make this Constitution happen. So that is actually how we got this copy of the Constitution. Take a real quick peek at your paper. Don't rip it up. Just check to make sure that it is absorbing some of that water. You can push it into um, that liquid just a bit more if you want to get your other pieces, um, you know, kind of soaked in there. But don't be rough with it, right? Because now we have wet paper and we don't want it to, to spill. All right. What does the Constitution actually say? So it starts out with this really, really, really pretty sort of poetic line that says, we the people of the United States. Why did they choose that phrase, right? Why not, hey, all 13 states think this, or hey, listen, this is what we think needs to happen, right? Number one, we the people of the United States, right? It just sounds better. But also they wanted to represent themselves as one unified body, right? They were one nation and they were coming together and they wanted to make this, this new land a, a place of new opportunities. So they started it that way. And then they start to talk about, you know, all the things that they really that they fought for, right? And the things that they wanted for their new country. So it was a free and independent country. So in order, it says, in order to form a more perfect union, notice that it does not say flawless, right? They were not ignorant to the fact that it wasn't always going to be in tip top shape, but they wanted to be better than yesterday. So that beginning to the constitution, the preamble that says we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, um, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. What does that mean? What is domestic tranquility? It's really fancy. And it means that they want the states to get along. Now, if we think about the state of Pennsylvania, right? We think about the side of Pennsylvania where Philadelphia is and the opposite side of Pennsylvania where Pittsburgh is, right? And on football Sunday, a house in Philadelphia is probably not watching the same football game as a house out in Pittsburgh, right? And if we had to, you know, put money down on a football game, we wouldn't do it on the same team. Those kinds of rivalries are okay within a state, but what they really wanted was the state of Pennsylvania to get along with the state of Virginia and the state of Virginia to get along with Connecticut, right? They wanted all of the states just to be fair and, and to get along, even if they shared a different opinion. So it went through all of that. And then it starts to break down the branches of government. What? Yeah, that's also in the constitution. But before that even happened, we got our very first president, which was super big. Shout the name out of the very first president. Yes. George Washington, right? Really cool job. Raise your hand if you would want the job as the country's first president. No, not me. That was probably a very stressful position, right? But they chose George Washington because he had led the country to victory in the war. He stood for a lot of things. And they thought, listen, if anybody is going to lead this nation, it's going to be him. So they unanimously voted for him, which means everybody voted for George Washington. And he was our very first president. And a lot of the rules and regulations that we still have in, in practice today and in place today were started by George Washington, right? So that's kind of cool as well. All right, so rules for becoming a president, because not just anybody can become a president. Did you know that there were rules to becoming the president? 
Number one, you must be a natural born citizen, which means you have to have been born in the United States of America. Second rule, you have to be at least 35 years old. Now I am freshly 35. Nothing magical happens when you turn 35, but I imagine that they probably think you are wise and you're mature and you've lived long enough to understand a few things, right? And you have to have been a resident of the United States for at least 14 years. So you could have lived in other countries for a little bit of time, but you have to have been a resident, meaning living in the United States for at least 14 years. Those are the rules to becoming president. So we have three branches. It is broken down in the constitution. And this part is really cool. They thought of all of this. Remember we talked about the constitutional convention and how the, the former document that um, the articles of confederation didn't work. This is why this, these are the things that they thought of that helped. All right, real quick, take a peek at your paper. If it looks like it's soaked up, this is what you're gonna do carefully dump your, and if you need help, ask for some help. Don't, don't dump the coffee and the tea all over, but I'm just dumping out, um, my tea water, my coffee water off of my paper or out of my cookie sheet and leaving my paper there. So we can do the next step, a couple of different ways. You can lay out your towel and just lay that flat on your table or your workstation, your desk, and flip it over. That's what I'm going to do. But you can also pick up your paper from the back of your pan. That's a little tricky because wet paper has been sticking to this pan for a while. So give it a little shake. You might have to pull just the corner and that paper will start to fall out. Okay. It is going to be super soaked. So be careful. And when it comes out, it'll look like this, right? So it's soaking, dripping wet, but it's covered in tea water and coffee. And that's how we're getting that old sort of look to it. Now, a couple of extra things you can do before you soak your paper or when it comes out, you can actually break up a tea bag, like a wet tea bag, just a little bit, if you want, and get out some of those tea grounds or the, the little um, tea leaves and rub just a little bit into your paper. And that's just going to deepen that color and it's going to look just older and fun. So you can go ahead and rub that in. The other thing you can also rub in is cocoa powder if you want to. We're going to let that dry. Um, you can let it dry for about two hours on your, your towel, or you can speed up the aging process with a hairdryer, right? But make sure again, that you are um, not doing anything you shouldn't be doing with a hairdryer. Make sure that um, mom, dad, grandma, aunt, uncle, learning coach know that you're using the hairdryer and let that paper dry. And then we're going to come back to it because I already have a dried piece of paper ready to go. All right. So the constitution breaks down our three branches of government. We have the first branch of government, which is the executive branch. That is the, the office of the president and the vice president, right? So all of the rules and the qualifications and the things that the president can do, those are all listed in the constitution, right? It's the highest law of the land. So all of these little bits and pieces are in there. This is the branch that enforces the law. So this is my magic finger. This is how I taught this, right? Three branches. The first branch is the executive branch. It enforces the law. So it's like you're wagging your finger at someone and you're telling them what to do. That's what the executive branch does. Our second branch is called the legislative branch. This is Congress, right? And Congress is actually made up of two different pieces made up of the Senate and the House of Representatives, and together they make Congress. So they do a bunch of different things. They can make laws, they declare war, they regulate interstate and foreign commerce, which is trading and things like that. They control taxing. What? Yes. Remember, taxes were a problem before when we had the Articles of Confederation. Thank goodness for the Constitutional Convention because now those taxes are written in 
by people whose job is to write in those tax laws, right? So really, really good stuff that they thought up of at that constitutional convention. Two houses, right? The House of Representatives and then the Senate, they make the legislative branch. Get out that magic finger because this is the branch that writes the laws, right? So we have enforcing the laws and we have writing the laws. And now we have our third and final branch, which is our judicial branch. And of course we think of judges, right? So yes, the Supreme Court and America's court system, that's the third branch. They make up the judicial branch. And this is the branch, ready for it? That interprets the law. So they get to decide if, number one, if a law is constitutional, right? Does a law violate someone's rights? Or has someone technically broken the law, right? So they get to go through and kind of decide all of that sort of thing. So we have the executive branch that enforces the law. We have the legislative branch that writes the law. And then we have the judicial branch that interprets the law. Three different branches, three very different jobs because of something very, very important called balance of power. And the reason we have balance of power is so that no one branch can control everything. That's why the executive branch handles one aspect, the legislative branch handles another, and the judicial branch handles yet another aspect. And they balance each other out because we kind of remember what it was like when one person ruled the country, King George III and how terrible that was, right? So balance of power, three different branches, really cool stuff. <sighs> Thank goodness for change, right? Change is really important and the constitution allows for it. It is called an amendment. So if we need to make a change to the constitution because over time things change, people change, we need to change our laws, we can write in what's called an amendment. And that is a change to the constitution. We're saying, hey, listen, this, we did not realize this before, but we realize this now. And so we're writing in this new law, this new piece to the constitution so that it benefits other people. Really important stuff. Do you have any idea how many amendments there have been to the US constitution? Give it a thought. Ask your learning coach if they know how many amendments there have been in the U.S. Constitution. There have been 27 amendments to the Constitution. The last amendment was approved in 1992. That seems like a lifetime ago. It was not a lifetime ago, right? So really awesome process that they have. Now comes some of the things that you probably hear a lot about. We talk a lot about constitutional rights. And a constitutional right, we say that because within the constitution, there was sort of this sub document that was written and it was called the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights went into effect in 1791 because the founding fathers wanted very basic rights. They wanted the citizens to have these rights that they couldn't be taken away, right? So all sorts of, of um, constitutional rights, right? We have the freedom of speech. We have the protection from unlawful search and seizure, right? All of these really big things that might not make a lot of sense, but they're very important. You have the right to a speedy trial, the right to a jury, no excessive bail and cruel and unusual punishment, right? So those things are important. One really important thing that is not necessarily applicable today was something called the freedom from quartering soldiers during a time of peace. And you're probably like, what does that even mean? Way back when, when there was an active war going on, if there was a soldier that was around your house and they were hungry, they were tired, they were dirty, they were thirsty, they could knock on your door and you would have to let them in. You would have to give them a place to sleep and eat and use the bathroom. But that constitutional right was only, was only there when, when there was an act of war going on, right? So if there wasn't an act of war, if, if the country was not in war and a soldier knocked on your door and said, hey, I'm hungry, 
you didn't have to let them in, right? So these constitutional rights were really important to them. There were 10 of them that they originally wrote out on the original Bill of Rights document in 1791. So all of these pieces come into play in the Constitution. And all the way back when the Constitution was being written, and we started out with that failed document, the founding fathers knew that they had to put in some different efforts into making a constitution that works, right? Now, is the constitution perfect? No, of course not, right? Are there ways that, that it could be changed or tweaked? Of course, right? But what's really, really awesome is as, as America was developing and other countries were looking at our constitution, they sat there and they were like, huh, that's, that's a pretty good idea what they have written there. And they started to use our constitution as a guideline for writing their own constitution, right? So a lot of the things that we have going on in our constitution were adopted by other countries. And a lot of those freedoms that, that we sort of take for granted sometimes every day are things that other countries don't necessarily get to have. So the Constitution is important. You just had a crash course in the Constitution. It is really important. So high five yourselves for understanding the basic bones of the Constitution because it is amazing and it is powerful, so powerful that you know that. So remember, the original draft was called the Articles of Confederation. The problem was there was really no way to enforce taxes. There was no governing body, right? So the founding fathers got together. They rewrote the document. They listed three branches of government. They put in a process to make a change to the constitution. They added rules for becoming a president and they added those 10 basic rights. That is the constitution, my friends. Awesome stuff. Now, it has not been two hours since we dried our paper but I made one this morning. And so once it dries, it's going to look old and crumply and it's gonna feel different. It's actually gonna feel thicker, which is kind of cool. So when you're all done with your old piece of paper, be gentle with it, but you can start to now break those fibers down and make it soft. So if you fold your paper in half and rub it like this, you'll start to feel um, just those fibers breaking down. And in the center, you can start to feel that paper soften and it'll start to feel kind of like, like parchment, right? Which is that soft fabric um, sort of paper. So have fun with it. Um, fun ideas to do when you're doing your old paper. You can write letters to people. You can draw treasure maps. Um, I am doing a bunch of the, or I, well, I am doing a bunch of these because this is being filmed in the beginning of December, but I'm doing a bunch of little um, recipes and I'm putting them in with uh, mason jars that have cookie ingredients in them. So the recipe will be with the jar. It's a cute little gift. Um, but yes, this is your old document. Have fun with it. And I hope you enjoyed the constitution. Take that knowledge and go places with it because I am telling you, it is so powerful that you know about the constitution. And that is what I have for you. Sheik, I will hand it over to you. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much. Yeah. for sharing with uh, all the kids. And I hope everybody had an opportunity to mess around a little bit, learned a whole lot about <laughs> the constitution and might have something to show us too. If you did this project, please take a picture of it and make sure to share it with us, with our Twitter, with our Facebook, with our Instagram at PA Virtual Charter School. We'll be happy to see it. And it's almost here. 2022 is almost here. And we cannot wait to see you in the new year. Uh, Miss Amy Page, anything you want to add to the kitties? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think just, um, again, I am, I'm proud of you for sitting around for 20 minutes and learning about the constitution. It is not easy stuff, but you learned a lot and I'm super proud of you. So high five. <laughs> awesome stuff. Well, listen, stay safe. We can't wait to see you very, very soon as you come back to school. And I hope you had fun. And this video will be staying up 
for much longer than just the holiday season. So if you want to share it with your friends or you want to share it with a family member or a cousin or what have you, it will be here. Just check out our YouTube page where you are now and you'll be able to check it out and do more and more activities. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your winter break and we cannot wait to see you in 2022. Bye y'all. Thank <music> you.